Okay, so I'm going to show you the testing that uh, the Polygraph SD machines uh, undergo before they're ready to go. Uh, this is just a freshly assembled machine. Uh, there's a polar shield there, so we're testing the soldering on that. Make sure all the connections are okay. <coughs> uh, we'll check that the LCD is working okay and the touchscreen aspect of it is working okay. Um, that the SD port, the SD card port on the side of it is okay here. We check that the motor drivers are, are working and we check that the motors themselves are working so these are the same motors that will go out in this kit and that the wires and the cables and things that go with it are also working lastly we'll be making sure that the um, XB wireless port here is uh, wired up okay there's a couple of extra bits there which benefit from checking and that the servo motor has got a proper range of motion on it and um, a lot of them don't so first of all this is already wired up with USB um, which proves that that was working that was a good sign um, I'll just Fire off some, fire off some commands to it. So this is uploading a machine size, um, a machine spec rather, and they all went well. On the screen here, I've seen a response, and that is exactly what I'm looking for. So that's good. So test motors next, and we do that by plugging a couple of motors in. Uh, these are the cables that come with the full Polygraph SD kit rather than the Vitamins kit, um, which is why they got these neat connectors on it. Uh, in fact the vitamins kit doesn't come with any connectors at all so this is the main power lead um, power supply so that's day this one is seven and a half volts it's restarting which is a good sign so these motors are currently uh, loose they're not doing anything if I hit motors on then you can see them both have a bit of a wriggle there and now long, no longer there they're not long uh, they're not loose anymore um, that's a good sign we'll check to see whether the SD card aspect is working okay so I'll plug one in here which has got an image on it just restart it because it needs a restart in order to get the uh, to initialize the card uh, draw from SD find a file skeleton there we go draw this file yes yeah, so that's a good sign so it is reading now off the card um, and it's outputting all the commands for that so that is the test for the touch screen and also for the LCD. Uh, the last thing that I want to check while this is running is um, the uh, pen lift here. So when I plug this into here that goes this way, you hear that's shivering about the place there. And so there it is. So it's pen, uh, pen up and then move into a new place and then pen up. And we've got it judge that right there we go okay so that's how that's going to be on that's going to be pen pen up move to a new point pen down draw up, spot, pen up and down yes yeah, so that's working fine some of these don't have a very wide range you only go a very small amount so it's not quite enough to lift off the page so I tend to try and weed those out and get rid of them on the way so the last thing to try that's all working fine. There's a little power light on there, which you can probably see. Um, last thing to try is the uh, wireless module. So I'll just reset that. Um, I'll get that out of the way. Uh, the modules I'm using. Uh, the modules I'm using are XRF wireless modules here. So I've got one attached to the computer there on a little um, USB bub thing and I've got this other one here which I'll be plugging into here. And I'll just kill the power for that, push that in there and switch this over, this little switch on the side here, so that it is uh, wired in. Before that it wasn't actually wired in so it needs to be not wired in order to the programming over the USB. So there we go. So there's a little light on here which says that we've got power. It's good. Um, this is busy restarting. It takes a little bit while there because it's got to read all the card. And that, uh, for better or for worse, takes a while. So I've just got a message in my software here to say that the, uh, the connection's been found. And I'm going to send a couple of commands. And you can see them coming in there. That's great. And I'll do a set home which should move the, move the motors and the uh, 
couple of move direct things there. And you can see the RX and TX here blinking every now and again when it gets a new message. These are quite big moves, so there's only going to be a couple of them. But um, there you go. So that's really what the difference. Uh, that's really what the testing is. Uh, that we'll be doing. I'll just move those to one side. Um, the only difference between that and uh, this is the board that's ready for the regular SD. This is the board that's ready for just a vitamins kit that someone's ordered. Um, uh, the difference with the vitamins kit is that it comes with the 3.3 volt regulator. That's because these chip, uh, these transmitters and receivers uh, can be quite power hungry. And I have had a lot of experience of low quality Arduinos, uh, like clone boards, that sort of thing, of being quite rubbish when it comes to um, the 3.3 volt uh, supply. So there's a little bit of extra power supply there to voltage regulator and a couple of um, extra capacitors just to smooth it out. Uh, the only other difference is that they come with these plug-in, uh, pluggable um, screw terminals because it's for your own wires, you know how long they want to be, you know how long you want to be, you know how which wires you've got lying around the place as well, so there you go. And that will undergo, undergo the same testing. Okay. Okay, we're going to be assembling the um, Polygraph SD brain box thing uh, at the moment. These are all the parts we need. We've got six bolts there. Um, there's also six nuts. There's one out there. And the rest of them are already pushed into these little holes here. Uh, I just use an Allen key to do that because it's usually a fairly tight fit. Um, there's the uh, board, so that just slips into there. Um, use a, one of these. To hold it in. And then one of these goes on top. So that supports the LCD. Like so. Next part is this part, which goes on the front, slides under here, couple of screws either side. This panel as well does have um, some sort of weakened sections here for the um, XB port so if you want to use the case but you still want to add an XB onto it you can just cut that out with a pair of snips or something and there's a hole here as well which actually reveals the um, um, limit stop the end point pins as well so not that, none of that actually works yet but it will at some point so just cut off some stray filaments there um, and this one goes on the top Up that. There we go. And the last one goes in there. This one is a loose fit for some reason, for one reason or another. For here. Um, Just need to get a few, thre a few threads engaged there, and the rest will pull it in. Okay, so there we go. Do a quick test just to make sure it still powers up okay. Um, 
and that tightening all these nuts up hasn't somehow pulled a pulled joint or something like that. Looks good to me. Yep, so it's responding fine. I'm going to call that done.